continue moving around here in the Egyptian Museum, just one can feel as if we are moving throughout history because we are moving on from one dynasty to the other, from one age to the other, starting from the old kingdom. Well, definitely when we talk about ancient Egyptians, we have a lot of things to talk about. And each dynasty is unique on its own, whether we're talking about kings, uh, pharaohs, well, of course, a lot of things to be tackled. Well, right now we're standing in one of the most important places inside the museum. We're talking about Amarna. What is Amarna and what is specific about it? And what do we have to tell you about this important age? Well, it's going to be all on our backpack today. The Egyptian Museum is home to an extensive collection of ancient Egyptian antiquities. And no visit to Egypt is complete without a trip to the museum. But before we enter the museum, we must take a close look at the building itself. It is the first purpose-built museum edifice in the world. It is designed in the neoclassical style. It has about 107 halls filled with artifacts dating from the prehistoric through the Roman periods, with the majority of the collection focused on the Pharaonic era. The museum houses about 160,000 objects, covering 5,000 years of Egypt's history. Moving around the museum make you feel as if you are traveling from one age to another, surrounded with so many ancient pieces and artifacts that reflect different ages, going back thousands of years. On the entrance, there is an impressive big colossus for Ramses II, the third king of the 19th dynasty, as we call him Ramses the Great. He is often regarded as the greatest, most celebrated, and most powerful pharaoh of the Egyptian Empire.
His successors and later Egyptians called him Great Ancestor. Ramses II led several military expeditions. Ramses the Great, but also as a great warrior, builder, family, and religious man. We know the volatile political climate that existed during his reign, during to the many writings that have survived the test of time. These writings have given us insight into the man as a political being and how he controlled his kingdom and how he managed to outsmart many of his enemies. There are two main floors in the museum, the ground and the first floor. On the ground floor, there is an extensive collection of papyrus and coins used in the ancient world. The numerous pieces of papyrus are generally small fragments due to their decay over the past two millennia. Several languages are found on these pieces, including Greek, Latin, Arabic, and the ancient Egyptian writing language of hieroglyphs.
This has helped historians research the history of ancient Egyptian trade. Also on the ground floor are artifacts from the New Kingdom, the time period between 1550 and 1069 BC. These artifacts are generally larger than items created in earlier centuries. Those items include statues, tables and coffins. The Old Kingdom is the name given to the period in the 3rd millennium BC, when Egypt attained its first continuous peak of civilization in complexity and achievement. first of three so-called kingdom periods, which marked the high points of civilization in the lower Nile Valley. The Old Kingdom is most commonly regarded as the period from the 3rd dynasty through to the 6th dynasty. During the Old Kingdom, the king of Egypt became a living god who ruled absolutely and could demand the services and wealth of his subjects. Under King Djoser, the first king of the third dynasty of the Old Kingdom, the royal capital of Egypt was moved to Memphis, where Djoser established his court.
museum houses about 160,000 objects, covering 5,000 years of Egypt's history. Moving around the museum make you feel as if you are traveling from one age to another, surrounded with so many ancient pieces and artifacts that reflect different ages, going back thousands of years. On the entrance, there is an impressive big colossus for Ramses II, the third king of the 19th dynasty, as we call him Ramses the Great. He is often regarded as the greatest, most celebrated, and most powerful pharaoh of the Egyptian Empire. His successors and later Egyptians called him Great Ancestor. Ramses II led several military expeditions. Known not only as Ramses the Great, but also as a great warrior, builder, family, and religious man. In all these categories, he seemed to excel. We know this due to many of his temples that are still standing up till now. We know the volatile political climate that existed during his reign, 
during to the many writings that have survived the test of time. These writings have given us insight into the man as a political being and how he controlled his kingdom and how he managed to outsmart many of his enemies. Remember, we will be back to bring you more about Egypt and more about the important sites where you.